Hi, my name's Dan, and this is a, an overview of the logical theme system within Bookstack. So this is a system that allows you to extend and customize logical functionality of Bookstack without editing core files. This is primarily intended to be used by people that are familiar with the framework the Bookstack uses, which is Laravel, and those comfortable with PHP. While many of the kind of elements that we provide to hook into the system are considered stable, a lot of the content that you then might use to perform your customizations, we don't deem st uh, stable. A lot of the core code that you might um, you might extend or, or override. So upon updates, you could experience uh, breakages in the future, which is why I recommend if. Uh, you're going to be using a system that you're at least familiar with the customizations that you're making otherwise you could run into some trouble in the long term but what we're looking at here is the documentation page for this system and this goes into detail in terms of how to get started the different events that are available and um, the different methods that you have available to hook into Bookstack. But we're gonna run over the basics of that now, but I will put a link to this page in the description uh, so you can go and discover this by yourself as well. But let's get started with some customizations now. Um, here I have my own uh, local Bookstack instance. It's got a, some dummy content within there. And then I have open uh, PHP storm and this has that instance's files opened up ready to edit. I'm doing this on bookstack 21.11.1 just for reference. So to get started we first need to create our theme and register that with bookstack and we can do that by creating a new folder within the themes directory. You should already have this directory within your instance it might just only have a dot git ignore but we'll create a new theme and do that again by just creating a new directory within there. And this name can be anything you need to, that needs to be, that you want, but we'll just call it custom. Nice and simple. And then to register that within books, like if you edit your .env file and then add a new option in there, app underscore theme, and then the value of that just needs to exactly match the folder that you created. So in this case, I'm gonna call it custom then that matches that folder. All right, and that's your theme registered. But of course, it's not gonna do anything at the moment. So let's create the functions.php file within that folder. There you go, and it's within this functions.php file that you register any of your customizations. And Bookstack's gonna read this file within your theme folder upon boot and then uh, apply any of the customizations that you're trying to do. So let's let's make a customization. We will create a new endpoint that we can navigate to in Bookstack that uh, just lists all the names of the books in the system um, just out in plain text, each on a new line. So to get started with that, we'll listen to an event. So quite a lot of the customizations are based on event. We listen to a particular event and run our code when that event occurs. We can do that uh, by use the theme facade, which is what Bookstack provides. So it's in Bookstack facades, theme is the full namespace. And then we use the listen method on that. So we want to listen to an event. And then the event is passed in as a string, but these are all um, provided on a class. And that class is the theme events class in Bookstack theming theme events and then we have a few options here and we want to listen to app boot because we're registering a custom uh, root endpoint we can do that in the app boot event and then we'll pass in a callback and this callback is what will be ran when the application does boot up originally if we have a quick look into this theme events file and you can see this lists out all the events that are available to be used and you can use any of these. There's a description for each to say what it does, when it might run. And there's um, comment based type hints in terms of what it expects to receive. So this one expects to receive a, a request as its first parameter and it returns or you would return from your function either response or null. And then the description of what these different return types do will be described in the method 
if we have a look down here, this one that runs as a kind of late stage middleware after a response has been created by Bookstack, then this takes, uh, this will pass to your custom callback a request, a response, or a binary final response. And it will, um, and expect you to return null or response. If you return null, it's just going to use the Bookstack generator response. But if you provide a response back, then it will use that instead of the uh, Bookstack generated one. But that's an example for that. And yeah, you can have a read through here for the different things that you can hick into. But for our usage, we're just going to listen to app boot, which does get past this application instance. Um, but we don't need to use that at all within our own uh, customizations here. So within our callback, we're going to we can just simply register our root in here. So we'll use the root facade in uh, Laravel root and say get we'll go at slash book names. Again, we'll pass a function to act as the handler for this endpoint. And now we need to get our book names. We actually need to do the logic of our of our endpoint. So let's do that. Book names. Then we're going to get the book model within Bookstack. Start a query. We'll pluck out all the names. We'll join them together with a new line. That should get those. And then from this. Um, endpoint we can turn a response the content being the book names be 200 status and because we're just going to send this as plain text let's set a content type of plain text all right let's just uh, clean some of this up by importing all of these right let's see if this works so it's that slash book names let's jump over to our instance Perfect. There's all the names of the books within my Bookstack instance. So that seems to be working well. If we jump back into the editor quickly. So we currently got this just defined as a callback, as Laravel allows you to do. But this could get quite unwieldy. So what we might want to do is extract that all into a kind of controller class. So let's let's create a class within here. Class custom endpoint controller. And then we'll extend um, the default controller within Bookstack for that. So the Bookstack HTTP controllers controller. And let's clean up that reference. And let's define this uh, our endpoint method within here. So public function, call it book names. Let's copy and paste our logic. And then we can clean this up. Close that off properly. And then we can use the Laravel 8 um, callable syntax to reference that controller. The custom endpoint controller class. And it's the book names method. Refreshing that still works. Cool. And it's just a bit neater. So you can imagine how you could then. Um, you know, build this out in different controller models. If you're going to get, if you're registering loads of different, um, loads of different endpoints, and you can extract that out to different files. I will say there's currently no auto loading within this um, logical theme system yet. So if we referenced another class um, that was in within this uh, themes folder, you can't really um, auto load it by namespacing. It's just uh, due to a current conflict with how Composer works with the main Bookstack source code. So if you're doing, if you are splitting things out into different files, we will have to manually require or include those files um, to get them into into memory, essentially. Okay, that is our custom controller. As I said earlier, this system has kind of what well, describe a semi-stable support. So, the, for example. I'd consider this these elements like fairly stable. We will continue to support, um, and then we'll if there's any things that could break these like event names, for example, or this API of theme listen, then that will, will be in our release notes. But any changes that might be to this sort of book path or how the inner workings of Laravel work with its responses or or the querying system, 
any of this custom logic that's not considered supported so could break upon update probably won't in the vast majority of cases but it's just something you'd want to keep uh, keep an eye on right so that is our custom um endpoint added let's now add a custom command along the same lines so this will be a command that we can run with artisan and then it will give us a list of all of our books so let's build this out we'll do this above here so let's first of all we'll create our command and this is just like any other laravel command so we'll create a new class um, book names command we extends we'll find illuminate console command which is what you extend by default within laravel Cool. And then we need the few protected um, methods on here. So I think it's protected signature to describe how the command is actually run. So we'll put that book stack and then book names. So we'll be calling it via PHP artisan book stack colon book names. And then let's just set a description. ideal and then we just need our handle methods to actually uh, do the stuff that we want to do in the command so handle or is it protected let's see nothing's public public function handle and this is where we do our business logic so again we can uh, we can copy our, our logic from down here we'll get all the book names and then just put them out on the command line so this line book names so there's our command class um, but now we need to tell bookstack that this exists and again we can use the theme facade uh, bookstack provides so theme and then there's a register command method so we'll call that and within this you pass an instance of your command so we'll just create a new book names command like that now if we switch over to the terminal so we're looking at book stack colon book names php artisan book stack book hyphen names and there we go there's the output that we expect and that's how you can register uh, custom commands so obviously you can you, know, you can do really powerful things with this system you can add a whole bunch of endpoints add your custom commands um, then you could run you know if you've got something that you need to do quite often you can register that command and then put that on a cron job and there you've got a kind of custom scheduled task almost yeah you can get advanced and then again we've only kind of touched on the touch the surface of the events that are available there's loads of different things in here such as hooking into middleware hooking into login and register events and configuring um the common mark environment so whenever we render markdown within the system you can customize that to your own liking and over time we'll probably generally you know build up with different events that are required um, by people to customize their instance in ways that is needed but yeah that's an overview of the uh, logical theme system hope that helped you to think about how you could extend and add your own functionality again doing it via this method it means we're not touching any of the core application code we can just um just edit outside of that and it's just a case of checking that our customization still work if we uh upon any books like updates and everything but yeah I hope that helped and have a great day.